Oh my God, I cannot tell you how profoundly excited I am about today's live because we're going to understand sugar and the effect it has on our body, glucose and the effect it has on our body. And for those of you watching where you're thinking my menopausal tummy, it's January, I'm really now looking down and focusing and thinking what's going on? Why am I feeling sluggish? Why do I have these spikes in the day? Why do I have no energy? If you identify with any of these thoughts, and you know you need to begin to look a little bit deeper under the bonnet to see what's causing it. Sometimes if we cognitively understand why something's happening, it gives us the motivation to change. And this is all about change. My guest today is Jessie Inchowski, which is a very difficult name to pronounce, but many of you heard me talk about the glucose revolution. It's a phenomenal, it's a revolutionary book. Now we've always had every 10 years, people who've come and inspired us to think differently about what we put inside our body. But Jess has a background where she worked doing a lot of research at 23andMe exactly. and she garnered, there was some interesting research that she could do herself to understand properly about how glucose affects our body and what foods it's in and she took a lot of people, thousands of people that she did some tests on and as a result with all that research and that community she's built up between the glucose goddess and the talk she gives, she did this book and now there's more books coming. There's a book I'm very excited to have, I'm not a cook myself, I'm an appalling cook but she's also doing the glucose goddess method or the glucose revolution method which is going to be actually helping you. Now Jess, let's give you a big welcome. There she is. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Jess. Such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, yeah. Jenny. I'm very happy to have you oh, here. And I know you're doing you. rounds this week. Yes. And I'm very happy we can have you live mm -hmm. because you're doing lots of podcasts and things. But I'm live here. I've got my tea. We've You've got, got the tea. energy. We're going to talk about glucose. I'm a biochemist, everybody. And we're back. We're back. So I was Jess. telling yeah. you that I discovered that glucose matters for everybody, not just people with diabetes. So 80% of us, even if we don't have diabetes, have glucose spikes on a daily basis. And these cause so many symptoms that we just think are normal, like cravings, chronic fatigue, brain fog, difficult menopause symptoms, acne, psoriasis, eczema, hormonal issues, and then long-term, of course, the development of type 2 diabetes or yeah. heart disease. So I was like, okay, I'm not alone. A lot of people are suffering from this, but nobody's talking about it. And we need to teach people how to balance their glucose levels so they can feel amazing. So that became my passion. Okay. There you go. And now we have <laughs> the book and we have the whole method of um, yes. how you eat. Now there's so many different hacks. The hacks. So I think I want to get onto that. For those of you watching, caught up again, that's great. So there are all these different ways that you can think about your food, but the five hacks that you always talk about yes. when you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Tell us what they are and, and why we Okay, so the way. first one is the savory breakfast. And your breakfast is so important. It's not only the most important meal of the day, she's eating breakfast. It's actually the most powerful meal of the day. So if you have only starches and sugars at breakfast, that's gonna make a big glucose spike. And then your whole day becomes this roller coaster. Roller coaster of cravings, of fatigue, of brain fog, of just feeling like Oh, and addicted to sugar. So breakfast, you have to make sure you're having a savory breakfast instead of a sweet one. And trust me, this will transform your day radically. Finally, you'll be able to actually make your to-do list smaller, shorter. You'll be able to start ticking things off your to-do list because you'll have energy again. Can I ask you, there's yeah. people who talk about intermittent fasting mm -hmm. and um, not having breakfast. Yeah. So in terms from your opinion of how your glucose behaves if you don't have breakfast and you start with lunch. Do you have an opinion on that or not? It's totally fine to skip breakfast if you want, but the same rule applies no matter what time the first meal of your day is. So if your breakfast, okay. your first meal is at 8 a.m. or 4 p.m., it should still be savory because what you want to avoid is eating carbs on an empty stomach, so after a long fast, yeah. whether it's just overnight because you were sleeping or whether you're doing a longer intermittent fast. Because yeah. when your stomach is empty, what happens is any food that arrives is going to make its way super quickly into your bloodstream with nothing to, to kind of nothing mesh it. slow it down, yeah. slowing yeah. it down. Yeah. Yeah. So that. that's the first hack. It's so key. And in my book, in my recipe club, I have so many, so many easy recipes for you to have a savory breakfast. And it will really transform how you feel completely. Eating. Second hack that's important, I kind of mentioned it already, is if you like eating sweet stuff mm. or starchy stuff, maybe yeah. oat milk, maybe granola, maybe cookies, right? Never have these on an empty stomach, always after a meal as dessert. 
So for yeah. me, something like orange juice mm -hmm. or bowl of granola or oats with honey, yeah. that's actually dessert. So you should always have that perhaps after lunch or after dinner as a dessert, mm -hmm. never on an empty stomach so you don't make such a big glucose spike. Okay, I'm going to ask you another thing. Yeah. There's, there's so much we over the years and lots of people who watch, over the years we kind of get more and more information than it can confuse us. I remember a few years ago there was this thing of never have fruit at the end of the meal because it mm -hmm. ferments. You so know? then you're saying to me have orange juice at the end or have your berries yes. at the end. So I don't, that doesn't then, how so do I the, work that out? So the fruit fermenting thing is really interesting. And so I was trying to reconcile the fact that from a glucose standpoint, of course you should have fruit at the end of a meal, never at the beginning. So I was like, where does this fermenting thing actually mm -hmm. come from? There's no scientific backing to this whatsoever. It is a doctor during the Renaissance who wrote uh, articles saying that fruit rots in the stomach if you eat it at the end of the meal. It's just not true. So you no, mean nothing all these rot. people yeah. have gone back to the Renaissance <laughs> to this one bloody man? Yes, and, and exactly. So no, it's got to be more than that, Jess. Well, no, it is that. And then in Ayurveda, they also say the same thing, that you should not have yeah, Ayurveda, fruit yeah. you know, after a meal because mm -hmm. it's going to rot, etc. The thing is, nothing can rot in your stomach. There's, it, it's just impossible. Okay. Nothing putrefies, nothing rots. The pH is too low anyway for anything to happen. I think some people might get a little bit like uncomfortable if they have fruit at the end of and the meal. And bloating. Sometimes, yeah. So if that's you, you know, listen to your body, of course. But if you don't feel any weirdness to having fruit at the end of the meal, it mm -hmm. is the best moment to have it for your glucose levels. Okay. Yeah. When we talk about menopausal tummy, yeah. and a lot of women on here are perimenopausal mm -hmm. or they feel that they lose their waist, they yeah. just feel this kind of heaviness around their tummy. Is that just the, the ability for us to process things to slow down overall? What relationship is that to do with glucose? Well, during the menopause, so many shifts happen. Your hormones are dropping, it's an earthquake, it's very, very intense. And also your ability to handle glucose spike also gets worse, unfortunately. Okay. So it's very unfair. Why? Because, uh, our because your hormones are, are messed up. Mm -hmm. So it's even more important if you're perimenopausal or in the menopause to look at these glucose hacks to see how you can help your body process carbs better. Because you're just naturally becoming less good at handling sugar, mm -hmm. at handling carbs, and these are going to have a bigger impact on your body, on water retention, on inflammation. Often that tummy that you feel is like inflammation from the inside, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that every glucose spike increases inflammation in your body. So... I'm not gonna have a magical solution to solve everything, but I get so many messages from women who are going through the menopause with difficult symptoms, mm -hmm. not only bloating, but also insomnia, hot flashes, etc., mm -hmm. who by using the hacks are able to gain better control over what's going on. So yeah. your food is really gonna impact how your body feels, your bloating, your tummy, mm -hmm. also your brain fog, mm -hmm. right? Like all this is inflammation and food-based. So if you're having glucose spikes on a daily basis, your symptoms are gonna be much, much worse. So if it's we're looking at things key. like a brain fog, and I'm going to say feeling low, yeah. so not there's many forms and there's many reasons people suffer from depression, and we're not doctors either of us, but I do know that gut health and that brain connection is very strong, and we are talking a lot about what we're doing in our guts yeah. to be healthy of just like there's not too much sugar yeah. going in there. But do you, when you said earlier that, you know, you'll actually feel, if you have a tendency perhaps to feel low, this could help. Mm -hmm. um, what scientific evidence is there? A few really interesting things. So with every glucose spike, there are a few pathways that happen in your body. So a few like biological responses. One is inflammation. And your brain cells, your neurons, also experience this inflammation when you have a lot of glucose spikes. And that has been linked to creating brain fog. So brain fog can actually be that the electrical signal between your neurons is slowing down because mm -hmm. of inflammation. And that inflammation gets worse the more glucose spikes you have. So that's one. Second, the more glucose spikes you have, the lower your levels of tyrosine in your brain. Yeah. Tyrosine is a fancy name for a cool neurotransmitter. And this can impact your mood and make you feel a little bit down, yeah. a little bit like sluggish, be like, oh, I don't really feel good. So those two pathways are really, really, really key. And so if we get our glucose levels under control, I'm not saying it's going to solve all your mental mm -hmm. health issues, but it's at least going to give your brain a fighting chance to feel its best, right? Well, why is it then that, mm -hmm. and I think this is a habit, I don't know if other people agree, that when you're feeling that, uh, the first thing you crave is sugar. <laughs> I feel you, girl. Okay. When I'm stressed, when I'm tired, I just want chocolate. Yeah. I want a big chocolate cookie. You know why? It's because when we eat sugar, it releases dopamine in the brain. Mm -hmm. Dopamine is the pleasure hormone, okay? And as humans, 
we crave it. It's the same hormone yeah. that we receive when we play video games, when we have sex, mm -hmm. when we do illegal drugs, that kind of stuff. It's, it's the molecule that makes you feel good and happy and content and mm -hmm. sort of proud. But then it goes away. But every time you eat sugar, your brain releases that molecule. So having a sweet thing is a very easy way to get a hit. And often mm. people confuse this molecule with energy. So for example, in the morning, you wake up, you're exhausted, and then you go to your orange juice, you go to your oats and honey, and you feel a little bit like, whoo, like awake. Yeah. That's not energy, that's dopamine. Okay. On the inside, what's actually going on when you give your body a lot of sugar in the morning is that your little mitochondria, the powerhouses of your cells that are yeah. actually making true energy, they get stressed out and they actually are not able to make energy effectively anymore mm -hmm. when you give them too much sugar. Okay. So it feels like energy, but it's dopamine and then you crash. And on the inside, your body is just getting closer and closer to chronic fatigue. Yeah, that's good. I mean, that's interesting because yeah. I want to think of, oh, the question I want to ask is what else can I do to get the dopamine hit instead yeah. of that? So either I'm gonna go and have sex, play a video game, or <laughs> play a of No, what you can do, what you can do is have the sugar that you like, mm -hmm. but after a meal instead of on an empty stomach so that you get the dopamine with less of a glucose spike. Okay. Because if your stomach is already full, the glucose from the sugar is not gonna arrive so quickly into your bloodstream, yeah. so less of a spike. All right. Something okay. else you can do. Can yeah. I just say, this is yeah. a good one, Sh uh, sugar substitution. Sweeteners. Sweeteners. Yeah. Okay, so, let's talk a little bit because those people who are thinking, I don't want to have so much sugar, mm -hmm. but I crave sweetness yeah. in my diet. Mm -hmm. Mine is, by the way, my palate has changed since I've let go of sugar that, you know, things that have a bit of sweetness now, I they feel so much sweeter. Yeah. So it's quite, you can change it for sure. Yeah. But what do we feel about sweeteners? Listen, sweeteners are not great for you. Right? I mean, I'm never going to recommend that if well, you depending don't have on which ones, sweet, though, Depending on which talk, ones. Yeah. But... It's still better to have a Diet Coke than a regular Coke. Like, sweeteners are still better well, for some you. some people would really disagree with you on it. I know, I know. You know? But it's still, like, the evidence is very clear to me. It is 25 grams of sugar mm -hmm. in a regular Coke is so much worse for your body than some aspartame, even though, yes, there's been some links between aspartame and chronic diseases. But also, sugar has been linked to virtually every single disease yeah, under the sun. Yeah, yeah. So we have, if you're drinking Diet Coke, yeah. do not go back to drinking regular Coke. That would yeah. be a mistake. Of course, try to get off the sweeteners and try to use things like stevia, allulose, which are really harmless. And yeah, try to avoid the aspartame if you can. Yeah. But we have to be careful to not create a situation where people are going back from Diet Coke to regular Coke mm -hmm. because of this scare. That's okay. really key. Yeah. And then if you're if you're craving sugar, the best thing to have if you're craving sugar yeah. is a piece of whole fruit. Because whole fruit contains fiber and water, mm -hmm. and those slow down how quickly the sugar gets to your bloodstream. But then we can't have that on its own. We've got to have it after food. Ideally after food, or you can put some clothes on your carbs, as you were saying earlier. So clothes, mean clothing, mm -hmm. means adding some protein, fat, or fiber to carbs or sugar. So for example, if you want to eat, like I don't know, a cookie, mm -hmm. have five almonds with that cookie or have some Greek yogurt, or have a little head of broccoli before. Or if you really love eating pasta, make sure there's some spinach and some chicken in there and some olive oil. Make sure it's not just the just carbs. On its own. Exactly, mm. because on its own, nothing will be slowing down the digestion and you're gonna get the glucose really quickly yeah. into your bloodstream. That's yeah. what you wanna avoid. Okay, yeah. great. We're gonna take some questions now because there's lots yes. of questions on the floor. So darling, do you wanna start off with some questions? Yes, a couple of people have asked, what's your opinion on raw versus cooked vegetables? Yeah, nice one. My opinion on raw versus cooked, mm. cooked vegetables. They're both great, actually. <laughs> I don't yeah. have a very strong okay. opinion. Yeah. Um, a lot of people can find that eating too many raw veggies might make them a bit bloated, so it really depends on what you like best. In terms of getting the powerful fiber from the veggies, they're both fine. What you want to avoid, though, is blitzing your veggies into soups or purees because that's going to pulverize some of the fiber particles, rendering it less effective. So you don't like pulverized soups, you'd rather have chunky soups. I'd rather have chunky yeah, soups. Okay. And listen, pulverized soups are totally fine as well, but if you're trying to do this veggie starter hack of having fiber at the beginning mm. of your meal, a very blended liquid soup is gonna be less effective than a um, nice yeah. you know, steamed head of broccoli. And you can add some sauce and dressing to that, no problem. Okay, yeah. right. next. Mars has just asked, would you recommend intermittent fasting? Would I recommend we, uh, yeah, intermittent I fasting? We, we slightly I mean, we covered, it. covered it. I think yeah. we covered yeah. that, and it's, it's further back if you've just joined us, but we did to cover it, yeah. Yeah. Um, advice for pregnant women, would your advice change? 
Mm, Ooh, okay. well, always speak to a doctor if you're pregnant. I'm not a doctor, but it's important also to keep your glucose level steady when you are pregnant. One, to prevent gestational diabetes, and two, to just make sure your overall health is as good as you can. So a lot of the hacks that I share are easily applied for pregnant people. However, the vinegar hack, make sure that you're having pasteurized vinegar if you're pregnant. Doctors often recommend to not have any unpasteurized foods when right. you're pregnant. We haven't discussed the vinegar. Yeah, let's so talk about vinegar. Let's talk about vinegar. You don't like vinegar, Trini, do you? I mean, first of all, I wouldn't know where to start. Are we talking balsamic or is there too much fermented sugar? Are mm. we talking white wine vinegar? What kind of vinegar are we talking? Apple cider vinegar? Any vinegar works okay. except the very syrupy Italian okay. balsamic vinegar. So the paler it is, the better. Mm, I think they're all fine, but okay. you just want to avoid the one that feels like a syrup, like you're pouring it and it's very, very sticky. That's fine. Sugar. Right. But any other vinegar is fine. Okay. So, so of, the, of these hacks you have, yes. one of them is that before you eat something, especially carbs, yeah. you take a tablespoon of vinegar. In a big glass of water. A big glass of water. So you want to take a tablespoon of vinegar, and it doesn't have to be fancy vinegar. This can be the yeah. cheapest vinegar you find, yeah. the one you have in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. And you put one tablespoon of it in a big glass of water like this, and you drink it before eating carbs. Now, why do we do this? Yeah. Because vinegar contains acetic acid, a very cool molecule that slows down how quickly food turns to glucose in your digestive system, therefore slowing down how quickly glucose molecules arrive into your bloodstream, therefore reducing the glucose spike, which is what you want. You want the pleasure from the carbs, the dopamine, the enjoyment, and less impact on your glucose levels. If you continue and you go down the path where you're having a lot of this harsh penetration of the glucose yeah. without anything to kind of break its fall, do you think that that in itself can lead to type 2 diabetes? Because we've had a yeah. huge increase. It's yeah. like there's three billion people have... Type one billion, one people billion in the world people have and diabetes or type two. Pretty it's diabetes or type, like type two. So there we are. How many? We're seven billion in the world. I think so. Okay. Right, maybe. So what we're saying is, one in eight people mm -hmm. have a precursor to diabetes mm -hmm. or diabetes itself, which is huge yeah. compared to probably a hundred years ago. Absolutely. Okay. So yes, of course. With every glucose spike, you're increasing your fasting glucose level. You're increasing the amount of glucose in your body. And type 2 diabetes happens once you reach a certain threshold and your glucose levels are so high that that's called diabetes. So that's why if you have type 2 diabetes or prediabetes, using my glucose hacks is going to help you put it into remission because you're going to reduce how much have you have. Have you had some people who've gone into remission with thousands? Really? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is, when you have type 2 diabetes, often you're told something vague like, eat better, exercise more. And you're like, uh, what is that supposed to mean? Yeah. That sounds really difficult and complicated and I yeah. don't know where to start. With these hacks, and there's so much scientific studies supporting my work in these hacks, you're going to be able to reduce those spikes naturally, easily, without mm. doing anything drastic. And then in a few months, your doctor might be like, hey, Judy, you don't have diabetes anymore. What did you do? That's so cool. That's we're what talking I love to now. hear. In this, we're talking <laughs> about type 2. Because once it gets yes. to type 1, my father started with type 2 and went to type 1. Mm. Um, and then Kate, I have, I had type two, and now I don't. That's Congratulations. Um, a few little quick fires. Oh, is it really vinegar. necessary to drink the vinegar with a straw to spare the teeth, or is it fine in a glass? I've talked to so many dentists, so mm. many. So no, it's fine if it's diluted, but if you have particularly sensitive teeth or particularly worried about your teeth's enamel, you can use the straw. I personally never use a straw. Okay. It's not necessary. Somebody said vinegar water with cinnamon is lush. Mm -hmm. Would you do that together? Uh, yeah, actually I have a vinegar cinnamon hot tea recipe, which oh, is super Wow, cool. that yeah. sounds interesting. Yeah. Um, can we replace vinegar with lemon juice? Lemon juice is less powerful. It doesn't work in the same way. It doesn't have the same molecule. But mm -hmm. if you hate vinegar, like Trini over here, yeah. you can have some lemon water. It's going to be helpful too, but yeah. just not as powerful. Yeah, okay, great. Can lemon juice replace a lot of people asking that? <laughs> um, my 25 daughter has POCOS. PCOS. PCOS, I'm yeah. so sorry. Is there anything Polycystic she can do in the diet? ovarian syndrome. Oh, yes, let's talk about that because there is a relationship here. And you've yes. discussed this too, Absolutely. so tell me. A lot of people with PCOS also have what's called insulin resistance, which is like a precursor to type 2 diabetes. And yes, generally, the more you have insulin resistance, the more your ovaries are going to produce testosterone. And that can make PCOS happen. So I have so many readers who've used the hacks to reverse their insulin resistance and get rid of their PCOS symptoms. So yes, absolutely, get her my book or send her my Instagram, and she's going to be able to start making changes that could be really helpful. Great. Um, Liz, is it true that oats in a porridge are not necessarily good for you due to the sprays used in the start of the process? 
I don't know anything about the sprays, but oats are pure starch. So yeah. they're gonna make a glucose spike. So if you love your oats, make sure you're having them with like some nuts, some protein powder, maybe mm -hmm. some Greek yogurt, some seeds, so that it's not just the oats. Put yeah. some clothing on your oats. Okay, great. And or another... replace them with an omelet, so you'll feel yeah. better. Can I continue with my blended fruits? You talk about always have fruits in their original form. Ideally, yes. So, so blended fruits, so smoothies so, in the morning. A lot of women do this. They have a smoothie with some yogurt or whatever in the morning. Um, but if she adds in broccoli, nuts, and coconut fat, is that better? Add some protein powder in there because there's no protein in there. <coughs> and, and think about blended fruit. The thing with blended fruit is that when you blend your fruit, you're polarizing the fiber. So you're mm -hmm. essentially making all the sugar in the fruit very, very easily accessible yeah. to your bloodstream. So it's going to be a big spike. If you don't feel that good and you wish you had more energy or fewer cravings, Try switching to savory breakfast instead mm. of the sweet of the fruits and see how much better you feel. Yeah. I have smoothie recipes that have a little bit of fruit, but also, you know, almond butter, protein powder, yeah. things that are going to keep your glucose level yeah. steady. And I think it is this thing that you can think, oh, I could never do that. Mm. And I think one thing about January, it's about let's test our resistance. Yeah. Let's try something. Let's do it for a week and write a diary and think, how do I feel now? Or even the week before you start it, think, when do I feel tired during the day with my original way I eat? And then try just a week. What is a week of 53 weeks in the year? And see how you feel. That's my... I actually have a challenge going on right now for a lot of my followers, which is every week for 2024, we're all going to have at least one savory breakfast and at least one veggie starter. Just one time a week. Okay. And I have thousands of people doing this. You should join us. And this is going to help you see that tiny little changes that are not too difficult are going to add up to a lot to you feeling better and feeling like your health is going to improve as you as you age not yeah. get worse yeah great i love it how does coffee fit in uh coffee's fine just don't add any sugar to it if you yeah. can yeah cheese is cheese okay in your omelet in the yes morning? absolutely okay. my favorite omelet is three eggs feta and tomatoes yum 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 don't sweet yes um don't sweeteners like aspartame adversely affect your gut biome they do but sugar even worse yeah, and we're going to speak to Tim Spector about mm. the microbiome uh, in an, I think, a next year. Oh, no, I'm doing a podcast with him, so doing it on a podcast. All right, now, other questions you've got there, darling, because we've got some from the floor as well. Yes. Uh, Michelle just asked, are protein shakes on the whole a good supplement? The protein shakes what? Are, are they on the whole a good supplement? Uh, yeah, if you want to have a protein shake, that's great. Make sure your protein powder doesn't contain any sweeteners or any mm. sugar. I love having a shake in the morning with two big scoops of protein powder. I put some almond butter in there, mm -hmm. unsweetened, some almond milk in there, mm -hmm. a little bit of banana, a little bit of berries, blitz that up, put some cocoa nibs on top, and voila. I've got lots of smoothie recipes with protein okay. powder. So you have then put some berries in and pulverized them. Yes, but they're, for, they're there for taste. That's the taste. taste. Yeah. All right, great. Yeah, yeah. Because that's, I'm just going to say to those people who are menopausal, perimenopausal, it's the, the muscle we need to build back in. And what I do know is, you know, since I've been on your um, routine, Jess, I have to say I did lose weight, mm -hmm. but I feel more importantly the energy and that sort of really consistent energy through the day. But what I do notice is that I need to work on my muscle fiber. Yeah. And so I really, with Nat, um, who we work with a little bit, and if those of you who follow me, and, and we do strength training twice a week, and I do... Um, me too, I'm yoga always lifting weights at the gym. But adding in now, because I need to have, I think the amount... I'm working on my bicep. Oh, that's... Oh, my God. I'm that's working hard on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll show you mine. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Like um, but you need to look at how much protein's in your diet. And I didn't have that much protein in my yeah. diet. So I actually now, this That's protein typical. powder I started, a um, morosa or something I Most use. Most of us do not eat enough protein. Yeah. What, um, what should we eat per day? One gram per pound of body weight per day. One gram per pound. Yeah, body so weight. I can't remember what I'm in. I'm probably like 150 pounds. I don't yeah. know. So that's 150 grams of protein. Yeah. In one egg, there's eight grams. So okay. that's the equivalent of like 20 eggs I have to eat a day. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot. Oh, so you think you you need 15 grams of protein a day? For 150. You? 150 yeah. grams of protein a day? No, it's a lot. I mean, that's, that's a huge the, amount. Yeah, yeah. What's in a steak? 40 grams. Okay, so that'll be two and a half steaks. It's no, a lot. No, my mass is bad. That's going to be uh, too much steaks. for most people, but yeah. at least try to focus on increasing how much protein you're having because most of us are just having barely... 10, 20 grams a day. And this yeah. causes a lot of issues yeah. for your muscle mass, 
Protein is something we cannot make from inside of our body. Yeah. We have to eat it. Yeah. It creates your DNA, it creates yeah. your hormones, it creates everything. Yeah. You need to make sure you're having some. That's yeah. why the savory breakfast built around protein is so, it's so really key. good. Yeah. Something here, very important. I have Crohn's disease. This is um, somebody who might have irritable bowel syndrome. It can mm -hmm. turn into Crohn's disease. Um, and so fiber is an issue for me. Any help mm -hmm. there, please? Protein and fat. Yeah. Because protein and fat also reduce the spike of food. That's why when I talk about putting clothing on your carbs, it can be fiber, but also protein or fat. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, can I drink inulin before meals as a fiber source, or does it have to be vegetables like broccoli? I always prefer the whole, yeah. the whole food I'm version. I'm getting that from you too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it makes you feel fuller. Your body knows what it is. Yeah. It identifies it nicely. It's better for your gut microbiome to have that variety mm -hmm. of so many different plants. So Let's yeah. talk about oat milk, because I'm on the cusp now of thinking because I've listened to you recently and it really irritates me because I love my oat cappuccino and it also froths, all right? Yeah. But I do know that I bloat with oat. Bloat with bloat oat, with all right? And I moved from dairy to oat, yeah. but not that somebody said to me I was dairy intolerant. Yeah. It, I just went on the oat trend. Let me be candid. Let me, you know, share that. So I think it was you. And I was thinking, because I said to Molly, yes. I'm going to have a full fat milk yes. um, coffee. Good. Yeah. Why so, are you funny about this one? Because if you're not dairy intolerant, but you've sort of moved over to oats. Listen, it was a massive trend. So what is oat milk, actually? Mm -hmm. It is oats yeah. that are blended, mm -hmm. added with water, and made into a juice. So imagine you cook some pasta, and you put it in your blender with water, and you blend it until it's liquid. You made pasta juice. Well, oat milk is oat juice. It's the same. It's just liquid starch. Okay, you could do it with really rice. make it sound appealing. Okay, it's <laughs> liquid starch well, now. And so liquid starch, and so it's just lots of glucose molecules arriving really quickly into your bloodstream. And so most yeah. people, yeah. an oat milk is going to create a big spike. So if you switched because of the trend and you thought it was better for you, you can switch right back. <laughs> <laughs> your you suggestion do, is to switch right back. You can do almond yeah. milk, you can do coconut milk, you can do pistachio milk, you can do whole whole dairy. That's what I have. I just have regular dairy. But if you are glucose intolerant. I mean, dairy intolerant. Sorry, if you're lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant. Then yeah. almond milk is much better, yeah. soy milk, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you love your oat milk, because people have an obsession with uh, this. Yeah, they do. So if it's the best thing of your day, then please continue to have it. Maybe have five almonds before or have it after your breakfast instead yeah. of before. Yeah. I'm not here to tell you to never eat what you love ever again. Listen, I eat chocolate every single day, cookies. It's my thing. I just love it. And I've, I know that I love it and I've been doing it for pleasure. And so I use the hacks to reduce the impact of the sugar in my body. Same thing with oat yeah. milk. I do find actually another thing I started to do is I will have my coffee after I eat now. Whereas yes. I used to have first thing in the morning. And that rush, that the cortisol, rawness right? of it on my on my body, I felt first of all also the jitteriness was mm. there, and I just and in the afternoon that's when I realised now if I want to have another coffee in the afternoon, which mm. I kind of do, I can't have it on its own I because it. I I get rid the effect of it, the negative effect of it whooshes up. Um, yeah. It doesn't, so doesn't coffee happen. after breakfast is better for you, especially if you're tired. There's this really interesting scientific study that shows you. That if we haven't slept well, yeah. it's really important to try to have coffee after eating rather than before. Because okay. if you have it before, it might create a spike because of the stress yeah. and the cortisol. So, yeah. is there a book about this? Yes! Jess yes. has written a phenomenal book. Two books, actually. Two books, yeah. But the, what's the first book? The Glucose Revolution. Glucose Revolution. And then the Glucose The Glucose Revolution. Goddess Method. The Glucose Goddess Method. So, Glucose Revolution, the first one, has 10 hacks science, stories, it's like the best science class you've ever taken in your whole and life. And you can get it on Audible too, yes. I listen to it. Yes, and I'll, nice I, night. <laughs> I narrate it with my cute little accent. <laughs> so Glucose Revolution is the first book, and the second book that just came out is The Glucose Goddess Method. It's a four-week plan for the four most important hacks. Mm -hmm. Savory breakfast, vinegar, veggie starter, and movement. With all my easy recipes, just like you, I am the laziest cook. Yeah in the entire universe. So you're gonna get into my world and see that my recipes are more like assembling than they are cooking. Great, they good. take five yeah. seconds. Let's talk about movement, because yes. this is a big thing and, and also something that I have start, I mean, I move endlessly, mm -hmm. I'm never still, <laughs> but I do make this conscious effort now, having listened to you, of well, after I've eaten, walk for 10 minutes. Yes. And t talk to us about why this is so important as a part of our daily routine. Because your muscles, when they contract, they use glucose for energy. And the more they contract, the more they use glucose for energy. So we can use this to our advantage. What I want you to do is after one meal a day, move for 10 minutes. I'm not talking marathon, going to the gym. It can just literally be going for a 10 minute walk 
or cleaning your apartment or walking your dog or dancing in your living room or in fact you're at your desk you put your feet on the floor sitting down and then you do some calf raises so you kind of go up onto your ankles like this for 10 minutes nobody will be able to see anything and as you do these little movements your muscles are going to soak up some of the glucose from the meal you just ate therefore reducing the glucose spike of the meal okay. super easy very very powerful you need to recruit those nice allies, those muscles. They're here Re to help us. Recruit the, recruit allies. the allies. I love that. I love that. Um, steviol glyco glycosides, okay, mm -hmm. as a sweetener in protein powder. I always look for protein powder with no, no sweetener. With nothing in it, yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is, protein powder is the most disgusting thing. Um, some things have chopped in them, whatever. It is a horrible, yeah. you know, a natural, it's a horrible one. Um, any suggestions for the best protein powder as it's a minefield? I agree, Francis. I use, not mimosa, Marosa, I'm going to get you the name of it, but it has chocolate in it. Oh, you should avoid any okay. flavoring. So I'm going to research this as well. We've got Shabir next week to our, our lovely um, supplements hero, and we will talk to him about what he considers the best protein powder because nice. he researched every ingredient on the back of it. Um, Let me know um, what he yeah, says. I will. Uh, how about course, uh, cholesterol levels? I do eat lots of omelettes, egg muffins, but wonder, am I overdoing it? So for a long time, we thought that eating eggs was bad for your heart, and now it's been completely debunked. So most you know, health organizations in the world have, re have removed entirely their concern about eggs. We know that eating eggs or eating cholesterol does not increase your blood cholesterol levels. It's not, it doesn't connect. The one thing that does connect though is the more sugar you eat, the more your liver is gonna create bad cholesterol. So really, if you wanna help your heart, have the eggs, cut out the sugar. That cholesterol beginning with a D. Oh, there's, yeah. D, LDL. LDL, yeah. sorry, yeah. LDL um, I'm dyslexic, a so I got it second. Uh, <laughs> can you give me another option other than broccoli in the morning? That's only my way, I think. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's lots of ways. Yeah. You can, and honestly, in the morning, the fiber is only for experts like Trini. Like, I actually will have just something proteiny and not too many veggies in the morning. Um, but my, my I also have a recipe club. Glucose Goddess Recipe Club, you can Google it. That has loads of savory breakfast ideas that are very, very, very simple. Fantastic. Um, daughter is vegetarian, the best source of protein for her? Eggs, Eggs. full fat dairy, but nuts. If, if she's totally vegetarian. Vegan, you mean? She, uh, well, yeah, she said vegetarian, didn't she? So she can't If you're eggs. vegan, 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 it's gonna be very challenging for you to get enough protein. You have to really work hard at it. Yeah. A lot of people do the vegan diet and they're completely under protein. It's very important. Yeah. If you're vegan, you have to, it's, it's a full-time job to make sure you're getting everything you need from your diet. I don't recommend the vegan diet. I recommend you have some eggs in there, a little bit of fish, some dairy. It's going to be very helpful right. for your body. Is protein from veggies and pulses and white meat better than red meat? Let's talk about the red meat, right, white meat debate. I don't really know much about this. All right. Yeah, this is white just meat, what red meat. people feel about I mean, red and white meat. meat. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I watched that show the other day, We Are What We Eat, on mm. Netflix, which was sponsored, I found out afterwards. I got lots of DMs by the Beyond Meat <laughs> Foundation in America, which is about uh, vegetarian alternatives. And it really was a sort of shock tactic show. Yeah, it's terrible. But at the stuff. end of it, I did think, God, I don't want to eat meat again, just looking mm. at the state and, you know, it, it was a real scam on a great yeah. thing. But, but yeah. you know, eggs are fantastic. You can get good quality fish. I mean, it's still better to have some eggs that are raised in not very good condition than cutting out all the protein from your diet. Like, yeah. it's terrible. It's a difficult situation we're in, but it's true. Okay. I usually have Greek yogurt with fruit, nuts, and honey for breakfast, so what should I eat if this... Greek yogurt uh, is great because it has protein and fat in it. Mm -hmm. I would cut out the honey if you can because that's going to be a big glucose yeah. spike. So maybe add some... Almond butter or nut butter in there because it's cinnamon, feels, maybe. Cinnamon, I think cinnamon is really good. Cocoa when powder, fruit, yeah. When you want something sweet, sweet yeah. Mm. Um, and it does take a while, but it's like, I think every time you're doing this and thinking, can I get used to this? Just think about what goodness you're doing to your body. Yeah. Is the book available in Dutch? It's in 41 languages. You see, she's doing quite well. Um, Trini, please, if you can mention to Phil Spector, it, it's Tim Spector. I think Phil Spector is the guy in America who um, was. <laughs> Um, the, in movies. When do you do a podcast with him about oats? Okay, well, I will. I'm going to ask him about that too. That's great. Glucose Goddess has been the queen of books in France for the past two, three years. Has the flown. queen of books in the world, actually. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> the queen of books in the world. How many have you sold? Over a million. Over a million. Amazing. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, two of my favorite women says, Heidi, Aww. that's wonderful. Um, that's great. Any other? Should uh, one thing? Should we fast? Let's just talk about your view on that. I mean, it's it's been a big trend, and now a lot yeah. of the health experts are coming back on what they said and being like, it's not that important. It's what, what's more important is what you're eating, yeah. right? Because yeah. fasting for fasting's sake, and then just eating whatever. 
Yeah. Listen to your body. If it feels good to you, that's good. But also remember that fasting for too long is actually a stressor on the body. So if you already have a stressful job, family to take care of, you do, you know, cardio, cold showers, blah, 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 coffee, and then you fast, your body's going to be like, ah, too much stress. I'm freaking out. So be mindful yeah. of the stress you're adding yeah. to your body. Yes, it can be a good stressor, but maybe just fast when you're not too stressed the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe fast on vacation. Yeah, I know what you mean because your body's releasing stress. Yeah. Um, I love this one. So English. Baked beans, good or not? You Thank you. Baked beans come with sugar in them or not? I mean, so much sugar, you just really? can't begin to imagine. I mean, okay. it is like a sugar tin, baked okay. beans. If you look at the, the what if you make them at home? Uh, you could do. They're, they're not Batelli beans. What are those beans uh, that they're made from? There are some more natural baked beans, but I think they just have a lot of sugar in them. So you are having a carb sugary moment mm. um the book is called the glucose revolution does glucose hot chocolate powder count as sugar or cocoa powder it depends if there's sugar in it look at the ingredients yeah it's, if it's just cocoa powder it doesn't um that's great oh, trini is the queen of the book I, I, I have a book that came out too so what is the good snack to have after exercise whatever you want really because after exercise your muscles are still soaking up so much glucose from your blood you it's a good it moment to, to, to eat whatever you want oh that's that's really good to know that yeah. okay so if you really need to or, have that or before exercise right if you really want yeah, a cookie, because you're going to yeah have it before you exercise yeah i love this caroline i think this book has done more that more than just that, Jesse. It's made me more mindful. Oh, I'm so happy to hear yeah. that. And like, I want yeah. people to become food detectives, so they can look. So you can look at a plate and understand what molecules are in there and how it's going to affect your body. Because yeah. we're living in a world with so much confusing information and you know documentaries that are actually sponsored by food companies. And every single food product at the grocery store is telling you good for you, good for your yeah. heart, super healthy. We're victims to the situation. So I want to teach you really what's going on in your food, so that yeah. you can be in control yeah i think that is what's the hardest thing and i think we can all agree there's so much information from so many sources so i can't thank you enough today Aww. i just feel i hope you've learned a little bit about the effect of glucose on our body and why we should be more mindful and you can get far more information from buying the glucose um revolution as a book or download it audible and the glucose um goddess method, goddess method is yes. that the other book and, and check out my instagram glucose instagram. goddess it, it has lots yeah. of free content i follow it every day and it's fabulous Aww. anyway um thank you thank great you, and thank you darling for the questions all right bye everybody bye